industrial master plan, which will target increase in manufacturing GDP contribution to about 20%. This is how manufacturing has been performing over the last, uh, let me say, six years. So you see that the share of GDP of manufacturing has not been growing very well, and in terms of it contribute. Uh, GDP growth rate is actually on a downward uh, slope and after 2020, manufacturing has not been performing well. It's one of the sectors that is struggling and it is because of two main um, reasons. One is that the end user tariff for manufacturing is not competitive. Between 2023 and now, tariffs have actually increased by 71%. And in Ghana, the higher load tariffs or special load tariffs pay more tariff than residential. And so in terms of dollar rate, we see a lot more the industries are paying more. So if you are not able to give competitive rates, manufacturing cannot grow. Another thing is that the cost of borrowing is very expensive. The uh, Institute of Statistical and Social Economic Research did um, a sensitivity analysis and look at the challenges that industry faced in Ghana. And the three things that came on top was access to finance, the exchange rate problems, and also um, macroeconomic constraints. We think that if you fix the economy, some of these issues are going to fix by themselves. If lending rates are low, inflation rate is low, and exchange rate is competitive, some of these sectors are going to fix themselves. And because of these challenges within the space, that is why the special economic zones that we, we have always set up didn't work. So if you look at the Dawa one on the Tema uh, flow uh, stretch, it was expected to create over 80,000 jobs, but now it's creating just about 1,000 jobs and just about a dozen firms are operating there. That is also because the macroeconomic environment is expensive. And that's the reason why industry is not working. The same applies to the second. Most of the manifestos are overly ambitious and if it, if it gets through, it may place a lot of strain on our public expenditure. And that cuts across for the three political parties. And in terms of feasibility too, I think this is where Kelly was giving me trouble. Mm. <clears throat> It, sec sectorally, if you look at um, the MDC manifesto, you can see a lot of time being spent to expanding the issues and trying to find some sort of solutions for each particular theme or uh, item that we want to deal with. And so I, I would say that in terms of detail and information, you see a lot more in the MDC manifesto. Likewise, if you look at the NPP manifesto too, you see um, a, a, a lot more of caution around in terms of the macro issues. And so you don't see specificity in terms of where they, they can get us to in terms of growth, in terms of trying to bring down exchange rates, inflation, and all of that, and as well as other key sectoral reforms that we want to see. And so you, you, you see the manifesto is um, trying to be a bit more cautious but it has some very good useful information or very good promises that seems to also try to address some key sectoral problem. But in terms of depth, you see a lot more information within the NDC one than the NPP. Another point to 